Parental discretion is advised. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza. The podcasters. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. The Wrestling Mania Show? Hmm. WrestleMania, we're on uh, we're over our WrestleMania hangovers. We're on the raw after mania craziness and all that stuff. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. I don't even know what my name is anymore. Mayhem Studios, Pittsburgh PA. I got the crew. We got the crew that's got the got the cure for you. Uh with me, of course, from Johnstown PA is Bobby F. J Town joining us. Hello, sir. Hi, everybody. Uh, I wanted to uh, get my hair cut, kind of like Seamus's, but I chickened out at the last minute. <laughs> wow. Also with us from San Antonio, no, from Poughkeepsie, New York, is Mad Mike. Mayhem City. Mayhem City, bitch. Mayhem City. Mayhem City, bitch. Do we still have that explicit tag on the show? Yes, we do. Yeah. Yes, we do. Are you, Chachi's do you have any reason. seizure? Are you okay? Also with yes. us... Joining us, the man from the mainstream. It's Matt Collins, mainstream Matt.blogspot.com. Hello, Sorg. <laughs> good, 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 job. Job. Great <laughs> good answer. Good effort. Good effort. Um, Great job. Okay. And also it's from San Antonio, Texas, he's the ring commentator for Inspire Pro Wrestling, he's co host on the Indie Mayhem Show, Friend to Animals. Eamon Payton, at Eamon to please on the Twitter. Hi. <laughs> and he's Pat Matt Carlin's. Wow. <laughs> and this is your Wrestling That's Mayhem Show. We talk about... That's about, gimmick infringement. <laughs> we talk about the big-time wrestling that includes Terminators and old guys from 15 years ago, apparently still having an impact on what we're watching for the biggest show of the year. Oh, boy. Oh, but we'll get into all that kind of stuff. And, of course, you can join us and become part of the conversation yourself. Of course, go to WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can subscribe on the iTunes and the YouTubes and the Facebooks and the Twitters. All the links are over there. I'm not going to repeat them here. And, of course, you can drop us a line to 412 WMS Zero is the hotline, or you can drop a line to Good Time. Good time. I love Good. there's only four of you, but it sounded like an entire so room much of people. Larger than us. <laughs> Good, time. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, and we do have some fan mails I can't wait to read here later in the show. Um, so, uh, oh, also, big you, you can also support the show um, in the coolest way possible. You can become our boss at Patreon dot com uh slash wrestling mayhem show and there's links over there at wrestling mayhem show.com as well as look give a give a few shekels our way you know um drop us a few pennies it doesn't matter you can do a penny a show shekel, that's fine quack, quack. you know summer what no shekel, no not shekel, quack, quack. shekel deck what the hell are you doing but that's we want to think talks are getting a table pushed on top of it <laughs> His legs, his feet rolled Shucky up like Ducky. the wizard. The wet, Shucky, the wet, the wet, the wet. Oh, we'll get to that. <laughs> Shucky Ducky Crunch Crunch. Um, but anyways, uh, you can join us and become a boss of the show. One of our bosses is here. That's why he's on the show again. I don't give him a day off because he's a boss. <laughs> Mad Mike is on there giving a dollar an episode. Uh, I, I may be the boss. But I'm representing Bailey. So. Mm. Also, uh, our friends from TheWrestlingRevolution.com. They've been a longtime supporter, uh, patron on there. And also, Bo-Diggity! Woo! Woo! There you go for your earlobes, uh, who has been a longtime friend of the show and contributor as well he's our boss man and we give our exclusive stuff on there uh wrestling man show gold oh we didn't do that this week we'll, we'll do that here at the break uh matt carlin said oh, that yeah i can't wait that idea i that can't wait had. it's gonna be awesome everybody you're gonna love this week's gold oh, what's the goal interview sorg yes it's i'm the interview awesome. now there's a concept to this too right oh yeah we're going to do oh, psychological yeah. analysis of the effects of watching 30 WrestleManias in two weeks. Oh, I'm, wow. excited. I'm excited for this. That's exclusively you're going to get if you're a Patreon 
uh, on there this week. So with that, um, let's get into, uh, wait, what was our first? Hold on, I got a button right here. Oh, there we go. Best WrestleMania ever. You can take a swing at my ego. Um, so WrestleMania <laughs> apparently happened this weekend. This yeah. guy didn't win. Oh, he did him not there. win. He did not he win. Looks about, he looks about as strong in 2D as he did on uh, Sunday night. Roman Reigns did not win, no, uh, but we had a lot of fun stuff. So, uh, you'll really. There's, there's that, not enough smirking on that cut, cut out while he's coughing up his lungs. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I'll just kind of draw some blood in here with the crayons we had from the, acti- the WWE. Richard. I brought a WWE activity book to the uh, Carlin's uh, WrestleMania party. Oh, are we? Do we? Shoot, where is that thing? Wait, hang on. I'll go get it. Get, oh, go get the <laughs> Uh, so many people. Oh, we didn't declare a winner on the picks either. We didn't do that too. Uh, maybe we'll do that on the Facebook group or something. But um, anyways, uh, no, I thought, you know, instead of doing a recap, doing anything like that, really getting into the things, I, I want to really kind of hear what was your favorite part of WrestleMania? You know, what made it WrestleMania for you this year? Uh, kind of in a big question style. Uh, so uh, who wants to go first? Oh, I'm sorry. I got my. There it is. See you. Oh, there it is. There, yeah, check this out. I got this at a dollar I store. And Seth Rollins at the end of WrestleMania. Who? Oh, that, that, that's a real dated one. It's still, still got old, like in character Kane on the front cover. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wait, like an outdated Sheamus picture. There it is. See, like, it's no good anymore. Like, to, be <laughs> fair, to be fair, you'd leave. Oh, sorry. No, I was going to say you should only color in part of the hair just to try and make it more accurate. I was going to say, to be fair, leave corporate Kane in black and white. Yeah. No color. <laughs> there you go. Just color in his pants. Draw a real <laughs> face on his mask um, with a frown, you know. Because, <laughs> yes, of course he's frowning. Because <laughs> he's Kane. Um, he's Kane. a corporate man. He's grumpy a corporate Kane. man. You know, you ever seen a happy corporate man? Let's be honest here. Um, anyways, so so best moment for <laughs> – this is the acti- activity book review show. Um <laughs> There were stickers in there. I had to get there were stickers, and we 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 had stickers, and the kids loved it. Um, and our truth is blue. I learned from Matt's son. Good. So, I yeah. also I also just learned that Matt Carlin's kids don't see color. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> None of us should really see color. We should be teaching our children not to see color. Yeah. Bobby F J Town. <laughs> what I want you to kick this off now. What was your favorite moment of me? of WrestleMania? <laughs> Also, I just assumed that uh, Matt Carlin's kids were the ones that made R-Truth blue. It could have been one of you guys. <laughs> it was probably Lunchbox, let's be fair. <laughs> well, you know, you know. Uh, but no, it, what, <laughs> what, did you, what was your favorite part of, uh, of uh, Rather, Bobby? What's going on with um, the camera? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'll fix it here. I'll fix it. Just keep talking. My, my favorite thing was probably the, the um, ladder match, the seven-person ladder match. Nice. Even though my pick didn't win wasn't even in the match um he did get a new haircut the next night on raw but um and and also i i loved how they set up the uh the the battle royal the end of it mm. I, I i really enjoyed that it was, it was a good show um was it the best mini of all time no i don't even think it topped last year for me but okay uh, I, I I still think thirty was. I don't think I I think it's going to be a long time until they come that close again with the whole Daniel Bryan thing and, and Cesaro winning the, the battle royal mm-hmm. last year for the first time. Even though nothing really came of it, but it, it was it was it was an overall overall it was a good show. It was a good moment though, regardless. Yeah. And yeah. I mean that's still you like you get to say, hey Cesaro, remember that time he won that thing? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I mean that's still that that puts being, him in the like, record books. Being there live was like such like. I look back on that moment specifically, like very fondly, like just losing my mind when he picked him up. Like that's that's special. That, that, so yeah, I agree. Oh, uh, and, and at one point, I actually tweeted out, "What year is this? Or <laughs> this is the year 2015, right?" That's actually <laughs> that's of, actually what we were. Oh, the nostalgia. <laughs> we were actually screaming that at the screen at the party um, <laughs> repeatedly. Uh, we were very confused. But the, be- the best the best part it. of that to me personally was Shawn Michaels kicking Sting in the face. Oh yeah, yeah those cool. are two guys who've never interacted. Yeah, like not even close, and that was just really cool. They're also super born again Christians, so that's very fitting. As well. <laughs> Turn the other cheek and kick them in the face. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, what about you, Mike? What was your high spot? 
Uh, I had a couple. Um, on the pre-show, I have to mention this. My tweet was one of the ones picked when they asked Lita a question. So that was just super exciting for me because I freaked out. Um, I wish I had asked it from the Mayhem Show account. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry about that, Sork. Mm-hmm. But um, mm-hmm. it was it was pretty cool. It was uh, talking about Lita and Trish possibly going against the Bella Twins in the future. So I, that was that was fun. Um, I also really loved Rusev's entrance. On a goddamn tank. Oh yeah, that was the best entrance. So, ever. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, let's just say, like, let's just say right now, greatest mini entrance ever, right? I'm still gonna say Shawn Michaels on a zip line, but no, number two, like right below, is Rusev in a tank. That that's just over the top. That's great. It was everything. Was, I, I it wasn't wasn't that we were talking about. Like he needs to come out on this ridiculous Russian regalia. Uh, holy mm-hmm. crap entrance and that is exactly what they did to the mm-hmm. point oh. where not even san francisco could support america at that point C- could i add something go ahead and thank you for raising your hand um, on the audio podcast rusev, yeah no rusev's entrance best entrance possibly ever at wrestlemania okay yeah you have that yeah john cena <laughs> on the other hand had a ronald reagan powerpoint presentation <laughs> and then followed it up with the same outfit he wears every week, no USA rah rah stuff, and just proceeded to run down to the ring like he always does. I was yeah. totally disappointed. I wish he would have nothing. But but the thing is, Cena's had so many WrestleMania entrances, but so could, many. He could have at least come out with the Max Landis John Cena check. Yeah, <laughs> that would be great. That was so great. Nothing, you know, what if no one would do? You ever consider? But. I, but but from the the Ronald Reagan PowerPoint presentation, I knew he was going over at that moment. <laughs> so there you go, there you go. Do you think? Um, because I mean, it, it takes a lot. There's a lot of planning. Do you think like maybe something fell through in the planning for John Cena's entrance? Like sometimes I think that what, especially since you got a big one for one guy, but not the other one. Like you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into this. A lot of planning, a lot of choreography a lot of like well we got to get all these people to be soldiers or something like this you know maybe whatever troop that maybe was supposed to bring them out like they did in florida that one time or georgia or wherever that was you know maybe that fell through you know at the last minute you never know vince couldn't get the vince couldn't get the (laughs) eagles from lord of the rings to come and say it i mean last moment he should have just co-opted the swagger soaring eagle there you go he should have just co-opted that or had or like i i think i said this last night on the on the wrap-up Fly a Harrier jet in and use that to blow up the tank Rusev came down in, and then just parachute into the ring. Like that's ultimate John Cena. Wow. Yeah, Zeb Coulter is his manager. What about you, Matt? Um, well, I I really appreciate you guys letting me take this, but um, I mean Seth Rollins' cash in was definitely the highlight oh, yeah. for me. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was uh, Sorg. Sorg is a living witness to this of me jumping out of my seat. <laughs> <laughs> towards the end of the show. And not just because of um, of him running out and cashing in, uh, but just because of the very, very, very narrow time window that they had <laughs> to execute <laughs> this. Because at 11.55, um, the little producer in me, the little mainstream producer in me, was already starting to sweat over the possibility that they weren't going to have enough time for fireworks or things like that at the end of the show. And that's before Seth came out at like 1057. Yeah. Um, they, so by that, they, I, which I think was especially effective in that by then you're like, you've given up on him coming out in a way. You're just like, I, I guess he's not coming out. <laughs> Will this match end in time? <laughs> it's just like, I, it was a lot of tension, a lot of releasing of tension. Um, and the moment where where Brock caught Seth on the second curb stomp attempt and was holding him up in the air and Reigns is just starting to come into view. And in that split second, I had no idea who was going to win. Like just that moment of having like any one of these three men is going to win this match and I have no idea what's going to happen next, mm-hmm. which was a pretty amazing little uh, operation right there. Nice, nice. What about you, Eamon? Um, I, I do have to give credit to the actual Brock Lesnar Roman Reigns match because it did exactly what they needed to do. Um, the only way to keep it from being just 
a smattering of just uproar from from San Jose was make it a fight and and Brock, have Brock dominate because it was that was extremely entertaining. Um, it was something that when we I was watching it with a bunch of friends, we were just like so invested as to what Brock was going to do next. Uh, and I I would contend that Brock Lesnar is one of WWE's biggest stars right now. Mm-hmm. Just amazing. I, I really thought it was good stuff. Uh, I also want to give special mention to the Seth Rollins Randy Orton match, which I personally felt was the best match on the show, uh, and I didn't expect a lot from it. And I thought it was very good. Not just the RKO, which was phenomenal, but um, the whole match I thought was really, really good. Um, it, it was really fun stuff. I enjoyed it. Awesome. We got some from the chat room here. Uh, Wrestling Revolution in the uh, chat. Zero. Um, favorite WrestleMania moment? Uh, Barrett breaking a ladder and being the bejesus out of Stardust about bringing out stupid arts and crafts to a match. <laughs> yeah, Stardust is bedazzled ladder. That was amazing. That was the I, I uh one of my buddies who I was who I was watching it with called that the Rainbow Bridge. And mm. I'm like, yes, that's exactly what he was called. I don't think they had let the glue dry on that thing for long enough because like anytime everybody made contact with it, it was like glittering gemstones everywhere. It was it was a mess. It might it might have just picked up a lot of moisture under the ring. It could be too. Oh. Was, they were right and, in the and, sun. And because as Jerry Lawler said, it's very hot out. Yeah, so yeah. hot in the show. By the way, and they, also, can, can we give shout outs to the two pre show matches, which were amazing? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And even Alex Riley got got destroyed by Miz and Miz now. No, it did. was the best. I don't recall him winning a tournament of NXT talent to get a spot in that Battle <laughs> Royal mic. But he gets I, I, I think he was taking. Um, Jimmy Uso's place, honestly. Uh, Plus, they uh, probably him a rumble spot, and he didn't get one. <laughs> so, wow. Also, uh, also, can, oh, could I just mention that uh, my friends and I were watching Jerry Lawler and and everybody's uh, Mountain Dews the entire night. <laughs> they either they had refillable Mountain Dews that were bottomless, or they did not touch them at all. You, oh, uh, just a note. That was not Mountain Dew in JBL's bottle. Let's just get it that. <laughs> that was that was straight up Fireball whiskey. That Let's was that was no, You sure it wasn't um, Mountain Dew and vodka? I was gonna say Fireball whiskey is is red. That wasn't Fireball. Well, whiskey. the 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 container is green. <laughs> that's like true. That's true. Drink, Michael. <laughs> but but when they take those out there, especially with the uh, the diet Mountain Dew, I don't know what it is that makes it look like glowing yellow these days but um <laughs> that must do great things for jerry lolly's heart even, even like <laughs> renee and everybody on the pre-show didn't touch them <laughs> oh no uh, no i'm one of the wrestlemania today so barrett was drinking the hell out yeah <laughs> <laughs> barrett chugged and cesaro cesaro practically chugged it <laughs> and later cesaro in the, the, cesaro and he, was, caffeine to keep he going, was selling but. it too he was like Mm, like, making later, sure the label was out right and everything. Later in the restroom, you, you, you could hear their conversation with Wade saying, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. <laughs> wow. Um, and also from the chat room, I don't think I got this yet. Uh, Alex out in California, Cali, uh, says he loved, loved, loved Triple H's terminary entrance almost as much as Rusev. Can't. What? <laughs> what? Was it a daylight? The, well, only, the, only, the only thing that would they that better is if Sting came out in a RoboCop entrance. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, okay. I got to I got to go with that too. Um, I don't know his favorite moment, but not one of those like I can't believe they're doing this, but holy crap, they're doing this, and not in a horrible, horrible way. Yeah, it came off a little cheese. Yeah, it's a crossover for a movie, and yet another Arnold Schwarzenegger influence thing. Um, but a fun way to use Arnold Schwarzenegger at freaking WrestleMania, I think for the first time. Mm. Right, um, even it was a video package sort of thing, um, mm-hmm. but uh, it was interesting, and 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 I'm, the fact that it, it it also may just be the biggest, most expensive rib on Sting for the RoboCop thing uh, is in the back of my mind the entire time as well. <laughs> I mean, that's like that's RoboCop. I, I, there's sorry, mind well, games one, there. Once once him and the other robots were like rising from their uh, podiums or whatever, everyone who I was watching with just started laughing their asses off. Like it was very like. 
I, I don't, like going back to it, I don't know if it was daylight, if that was the reason why it looked so weird, but like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I. Also, he, also, the ring attendant just handing him like severed robot head. <laughs> like, just, here, take these. I, I, I want everyone to like burn that, that memory of the guys handing him the robot heads into your memory. Because <laughs> if you watch back WrestleMania now, that's not there anymore. <laughs> that's what I really? wondered. That's why I like. I feel like that. that out. Yeah. I, I feel like that wasn't supposed to be there. No. Uh, wow. <laughs> wow. It seems- well, because it was supposed to be like that. Triple H ripped the heads off the Terminators that mm-hmm. rose up. Like, that was supposed to be the deal. No, but it, I don't think so. Because you saw, you even saw them carrying the things out because of those, those, uh, the Terminator attendants, I guess we'll call them. Um, but, uh, it was John and Sarah Connor. It was exactly. John and Sarah Connor. But, um, no, Triple H, Triple H comes down to the ring after that and they basically cut the sting with the greatest look on his face. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> also, um, uh, we got to, we got to see the WrestleMania debut of Enzo Amore, which was nice. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. He was, uh, <laughs> The couple of the scarecrow in the room. How you doing? <laughs> was he the scarecrow too? No, he was the uh, double duty. Did oh, he have a duty? Oh. I thought he was the scarecrow. Uh, I, 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 well, I know he they was the resistance because uh, Antonio yeah. Garza put a uh, picture up of the, uh, what was the NXT talents who were dressed up as the Terminator crew oh, for I, Triple H's entrance. I, Triple H's I, deal now is I'm going to work in NXT talent into my yeah. entrance without letting anybody know. Yep. So, also, spoil- also, insider spoiler alert, uh, I do know a, a certain co-worker of mine and friend of the Indie Mayhem show uh, that got to be one of Rusev's soldiers, so I'll just say nice. that. Nice. I'll just keep it at that. <laughs> nice. Um, nice. Can I, can I say something about the uh, Rusev Scarecrow entrance? Bobby, can you not have to ask me if you can say something? You're on the I'm podcast. Sorry. Can I use the restroom, Sorg? <laughs> also, you you don't have to raise your hand either. <laughs> so, Bobby, you um, have too much Mountain Dew. I did, <laughs> Bobby. I know it's been a few weeks since you've been on after the unfortunate after the unfortunate Peeps at incident of uh, on on WrestleMania. I still Gold. have them here. They're hard yeah, to rock. Don't eat them. Don't eat them, Bobby. Don't, eat them. don't um, even throw anyways, them away. Just the, don't don't the, wait till Easter. They will not rise again. The Rusev uh, Scarecrow. Oh, you entrance? mean Bray Wyatt? Or the, yeah, the, Br- the Bray Wyatt Scarecrow entrance. <laughs> the Bruce Scarecrow. <laughs> the the Rusev, or the <laughs> Bray Wyatt Scarecrow entrance was cool, um, but it looked too bright, like the day with the daylight. Yeah. But um, Matt McCarthy of the We Watch Wrestling podcast, I follow him on Twitter. He posted a picture on his Instagram of the the actual photo from it, and it it looked so cool because it was like kind of getting dark mm-hmm. and it looks so creepy and eerie on instagram i, I, I don't like know that if... combined with like the smoke that they yeah yeah have. it looked a lot better like in a photo than it did the entrance looked there i, I guess I really also entirely defeats the per- song just changed into thriller though yeah i oh, was yeah, waiting yeah. for it the whole time entirely defeats the purpose of the uh, the lantern though yeah, like what but, are you gonna? What are I, you, but no, that's just I mean, really that's are. that's just there to be there because it's part of his gimmick. I mean, it's not a functional thing. Don't just get wrestling. Come on, functional things and wrestling. Why is a guy bring a snake I to know, the ring? You know, I mean, it does I, I it think, doesn't need to make sense. A, a it's bat wrestling. can totally split a sledgehammer in half. I mean, come on. <laughs> Maybe Bray Wyatt is gay blind. By the way, R.I.P. Sledgehammer got killed off of WrestleMania. Oh, oh. Uh, in a perfect lady sledge. Cut. That's right. That's right. Uh, Matt, you're trying to say something. I think we can all agree it was a shame that the sun had to stay up as long as it did. Really, sun? You really need to stay out this long? Really, California? Go home, sun. Hey. You're drunk. Matt, Matt, you gotta make global warming look strong. Gotta make global warming. <laughs> By the way, here's a, here's a, I, I, is know, this? I, I didn't really think about this until later in the in the fact. I'm like, would, would any of you guys, especially the East Coasters, like like Mike and Bobby and my, myself, would you guys have been that offended if they would like push this back an hour and been like, you know what, we're gonna go like. You know, we're going to get this all the way. We're going to go to midnight so we can get a, a solid 90 they've, minutes of darkness. I, I, they've done in the past. No extra inputs, you know? I wouldn't, but a bunch of other people would. And the pay-per-view companies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, th- I think it's some pay-per-view companies. But then again, you never know. You, I, then again, I was going to say UFC, but UFC runs on Saturdays. So yeah. it's a little different. And you, yeah. UFC events run super Oh, late, they run then. late. They yeah. run. They run like one, two a.m. Sometimes. UFC but they're all events Saturday nights into Sunday. So UFC events are run by vampires. 
<laughs> okay. And also, uh, from the chat room, Riz said he loved the Tag Team Fail 4-Way. Yes, mm-hmm. it was great. Which had a lot of Tower of Doom spots. Mm. So and uh, Woman on Bull Violence. <laughs> and Woman on Man Violence, too. There's some of that so too. okay, so we uh, uh, okay. My my favorite thing. Um, Speaking of woman on man violence, Ronda Rousey. One of my favorite things. Okay, can we say that favorite thing for a lot of us is that fact that she was kicking ass wearing a Vegeta t shirt. Mm-hmm. Yes. So yeah. I mean that my was pretty tremendous. Part. But um, Vegeta got more ring time than AJ did. That's true too. Um. Okay. Well, honorable mentions here. Divas match I thought was great. I thought best, it was good. Yeah. Best yeah. Divas mm-hmm. thing. Best Divas thing since the last thing I was excited for, uh, Mickey James versus Trish Stratus at like 23, 22. I, I can't call it down that. I love the Battle Royal. I know you love the Battle Royal, but I, wa- I as we mentioned, I recently watched it, and I think it's a hot mess. Um, I don't know. They, they, I think they did, for a 15-woman thing, I think they did pretty well. So. I think the fact that they for had a 15-woman 15 15 thing, thing that followed the Undertaker losing for the first yeah. time. That's, <laughs> the thing. Yeah, okay. That's what everybody needed. That was the biggest death spot you could ever be <laughs> in. The game. mother of all death spots. Yeah, yeah, that's true, too. Um, the <laughs> Ronda Rousey thing, even though the whole thing is really just to promote uh, Fury 7, apparently. Um, and also, also that's the comments from Dana White where I thought were kind of interesting as well. Um, apparently, when you're they're on that level they can do things like this um but anyways uh no my my favorite thing was not when rollins came out but early on when we had brock lesnar having his way with our favorite samoan with there. your boy. Mm-hmm. And we started like counting. Boys. We had Heyman counting. It looked like it might be SummerSlam all over again. Suplex City. Bitch. Um, <laughs> by the way, go check out Alex Carr's uh, t-shirt over on uh, on the, the Facebook group for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Go buy that shit. I'll go support him um, for Suplex City. Uh, but uh, that we did get a match. Like, I'm not a person... I try not to be a person that applauds blood, but it really... Not that it needed it, but it was really appreciated in this match, and it felt really Mm -hmm. important, and it felt, okay, he's not beating him, but he's messing him up a bit, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, whether... You know, they were hard weighing it or whatever it was, but it looked brutal. And he did look beat up the next day. Um, Brock Lesnar may not do too many matches, but he lets it be a fight. Like, I feel like, yeah. like my thoughts during this were, I feel like, you know, it's, hey, I'm used to getting punched in the face for real every six months. So let's just still do that and make this look good. Um, and I think that's really what came off. And I thought that match before the Rollins thing. Which was just the icing and just made it everybody's mind blow on this one. Um, the the slow mo slap that he gave Roman was one of the greatest like filmed things I think I've ever seen. Yeah, just Roman's like so face like passed out, just getting slapped in the face by Brock Lesnar. Mm-hmm. Great. They did, like there were a, there was a series of super slow mo replays during that main event that just looked vicious. Like every single one of them just looked. Like knees to the ribs, knees to the head, slaps in the face, like everything about that main event just looked in so part, violent. I feel like I feel like like even you know if, if this was a thing where Roman came out in the end, you know, I felt like they were on their way to making him look credible, you know, and maybe turn some fans. Probably not completely. I and it sounds like and it sounds and it sounds like it was actually a worse crowd reaction for Roman uh, in person than it came off on TV by a long shot. So it probably <laughs> wouldn't have even worked that night. Um, he would have had a freaking walk on water to make that to come out of there alive. And and yeah, as he is, there, there's, there's no turning back. There's no no no. Which is what you, what do you do with him now? You know, it's something interesting has to happen with him. But still, like that match at that point in time, early in on and and towards the end, up until the Seth Rollins thing, I thought was tremendous. And it was not a WrestleMania main event match like you've ever had before much like it wasn't a SummerSlam main event match like you've ever had before mm-hmm. and um and I, and I like what they're doing with it I'm kind of interested to see what they do with it next so I, thing, that was my take hmm? only thing that was missing was the vomit and urine <laughs> what <laughs> blood vomit and urine there's blood, no piss vomit. shit in oh jeez anything Oh jeez, <laughs> guys! So there's At that. We know. There's that. So uh, so let us know your thoughts on wrestling. What was your big high point from 
uh, WrestleMania. Uh, let us know on Twitters and everything. Uh, so, anyways, uh, and blood, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh so you know that we all supported the big one we all paid our 9.99 ish right mm-hmm. uh we're all you know the wrestling wrestling wrestlemania season is over and why don't you spread the love some other indie wrestling uh our friends of course we do over at pittsburghwrestling.com and indie wrestling.us he is a little venture, a little side venture here with Sorgatron Media. We just recorded before this uh, an interview with the great Justin Plumber, the uh, promoter over at IWC, the International Wrestling Cartel. Got some big shows coming up, and we got a lot of them all for DVD and digital download on uh, IndieWrestling.us. You can pick them up. Nine ninety nine for the last couple of shows. Uh, Cage Combat in Clearfield and IWC Reloaded. We're just talking about these were uh, attendance. Uh, record setting uh, for the promotion for the venues uh, 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 shows the last few months and all kinds of other stuff. Vicious out, uh, yeah, vicious outcast wrestling. Uh, our friends down there south of the city here uh, with uh, Davy Richards, their last show at January Jackpot. Uh, RWA having some great matches recently with Sanjay Dutt taking on Shan- Shane Andrews for the cruiserweight title and had just a great fun fun show at March the Victory this past weekend uh, with uh, Mickey Knuckles, former TNA knockout in an intergender uh falls count anywhere match raymond we're going to talk about this on the indie mayhem show because i have words about this match that okay. almost that almost went bad and we'll have a discussion about that um okay. yeah but you can buy the dvd and see it you can buy a dvd and probably hear me yelling at wrestlers on <laughs> I didn't check the audio for this one, but I did render it earlier today. Uh, but anyways, but no, it was fun. It was super fun. Uh, uh, Mickey Knuckles and uh, Nick Espontale are a great match. Fun, fun, Good to have her around uh, on the promotion as well. Some really cool stuff. RWALive.com for that. IndieWrestling.us. And check out uh, other stuff like uh, uh, Finding Zach Gowan, uh, the great documentary that we had the chance to be a part of uh, to put together, uh, is there uh, on digital download. Uh, Montreal Theory, all kinds of fun stuff that we've been working on over the past few years. So, let's bring it around to the mainstream, Matt. Sorry, I just have to mention you whenever yes. I come Yes. Uh, so, let's talk about the Hall of Fame or the Night of Too Many Speeches. Um, so, I, I got to view this. Maybe, I don't know, I didn't get to see the red carpet. I might just view it through because it, it's always kind of fun to see all those people out of element, you know, just like the WrestleMania Todays and everything, right? And you know, We were already alluding to some of that earlier. Um, but uh, Mrs. Dad, Mrs. Dad was in the background. Many I didn't times. get to see the yes. Hall of Fame. I get to see and, the- uh, Maria Menounos stole the show at the Did red she? carpet. Well, well put me on this. So, so what happened at the red carpet that, that she really kind of... Um, sword. She did the entire Dusty Rhodes hard times promo. What? Mm-hmm. Two, with, Dusty with, with, yeah, two Dusty Rhodes' face. Yeah, two Dusty Two Dusty Rhodes' face knew it better than he did. Because oh, he's no. clearly forgotten the actual words of the promo, and she did it in her Dusty impression. Mm-hmm. It was... A microcosm of gloriousness. It really, seriously, just scan through anything they did pre WrestleMania mm-hmm. and just watch whatever Dusty Rhodes was on. <laughs> whenever <laughs> Dusty shows up on your screen, whenever Dusty, because you can tell, like, when Dusty Rhodes shows up, everyone who he's around just, just like, gets heart eyes and listens <laughs> because he tells so many cool things. Just everything about it, it was so good. Mm-hmm. Plus, we got to see Maurice. Also a very good point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what was, uh, let's, let's do this too. You know, what were your high points of the Hall of Fame? What do you think was, was the best speech of the night, for instance? Amen. Uh, it's pretty funny oh, you should say that. Matt? I thought the best speech of the night was actually um, Shawn Michaels introducing Kevin Nash. That no, was the really? best speech of the night. Yeah, I, I thought so. Yeah. I was cracking up, and it made a lot of sense why they put that at the end of the show, um, because it was just a nice kind of way to keep the crowd energized and lighten the mood a lot of it after there were so many other emotional things at the end it of the was night. Fun. So it was good positioning and a good decision making. Certainly, certainly. Uh, Eamon, you you have some thoughts? Um, as far as the one I like the most, uh, I'll just say this right now. Um, you know, I never really liked the Bushwhackers because, <laughs> for obvious reasons, you know. Okay, I, well, I it's, it's not, your, not your but, era. But after the Hall of Fame, 
I got compelled to watch Bushwhacker matches for some reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was, I, and it's something I never thought that I would, would say, but oh my god, they were really hilarious. And <laughs> I, I'm sad that Butch doesn't make a lot of appearances uh, now. Uh, in, in like, because I think Luke's the only one that does like the independence uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but Butch is hilarious. Oh Butch's god. story. Because he's 80 and talks like a pirate. And <laughs> <laughs> it's the greatest thing. His it's story his story about how Luke had like the... Um, the Royal Rumble? The, yeah, the real yeah, fast Royal, Royal Rumble. Rumble. He's oh, like, I was in there 25 minutes and they got the same check as I did. <laughs> it was the best. Oh my god. Bushwhacker Butch was the best. Uh, amazing. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I do have to admit, I was losing it when they started making the random guys start walking yeah. up to the stage so they could personally thank them. Because uh, this is like, uh, who's like the strict, the most straight laced guy that we could pick out of this crowd to make them do our stupid walk? Of Bret Hart. Bret Hart. Bret Hart did not know how to do the bushwhacker. No, no, no. Bret Hart's bushwhacker walk was a four out of five. Well, there's a point where I'm like, my God, he's going to give him another stroke. And yeah, also, I kept mm -hmm. getting wor worried that Luke, or a uh, our butch was going to fall off the stage. And also <laughs> then he started bushwhacking with his canes and not actually supporting himself. I'm like, oh, what are you doing, fine. Luke? So you know what he was be, doing. To be fair, with the canes, the bushwhacker march will be way more effective now because he'd just be yeah. plowing his way through traffic. That's great. And, they did, and I love so that they far. did address a lot of, uh, like, well, we did all this stuff beforehand, and it's yeah. amazing that we got to do this and become celebrities for doing fun, weird stuff. You know, and, and that worked. You know, I, that, that that's that's so great. You know, I love how they seem shocked that they that they would be cheered. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like, <laughs> they seem shocked I, that that was the route that Vince wanted to go with it. I was surprised that they were twenty six time tag team champions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like not in WWE, of course, but like in their, throughout their career. And that's that the thing. That's awesome. one of those things where that, that was that that's the learning point. Like I can we get a mm -hmm. Bushwhackers documentary with the rest of the story mm -hmm. cuz the majority of us, I mean, even old time by Johnny Ace. I mean, what what Matt and I here are probably the old <laughs> the oldest school fans here, right? Um, I need to. And, and, and and yeah, Bobby too is along the same lines. And and we're of the Bushwhacker era. And I had no idea about this stuff. I've heard <laughs> nominal things about the sheep herders, and to hear these kinds of stories, which is so great. And this is why, like, like, uh, you know, I think the shoot interviews do well. Like, I would sit there and listen to just stories from some of these guys. You know, <laughs> yeah, I'm just captivated by these. It's like listen. It's like listening to to you know my grandfather talk about the good old days in Pittsburgh. You know, when he took a a a, a ride. You know, was somebody else's Sunday fair pass to uh, to downtown. You know, I mean, this is like the old guys, the way things used to be in wrestling, right? And it's yeah. just so fascinating, especially looking at uh, today. Um, you know, I I I think I I kind of uh, emulate a little bit of I thought you know Nat, you know Nash and Michaels was really good. I, I love the spot with it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I I have to go with you know the heart strings on. The, uh, the 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 Connor uh, McCulloch mm. introduction, and um, you know e even and I know she was really kind of raw and you know not a great speaker and you know but but hey it's oh I thought she did I thought she, I thought she was I a great speaker great. well I yeah yeah wait, 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 I, I'm great. just saying I've heard I've heard some things people kind of yeah. you go know, railing on that but you know for somebody in the position she she's in I thought she did very well oh, um yeah. in, in yeah, introducing that, that, it that, and and not in and some say that it wasn't about warrior it was about who was getting award no it's about warrior because he's the inspiration mm -hmm. for that's why this. that's why they had Brian, Brian yeah was and then there to make it about Connor and then have Brian <laughs> right yeah. Brian and, and she, Brian she was introducing the concept of the award exactly exactly and then Brian really kind of let out like what that meant and how uh, you know the story about Triple H and him punching him and everything like that, um, and, and you know go down to 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 his father and, and his, his brother coming out. Oh uh, my god! When just... the brother came out, I I just had to pause the Hall of Fame and get like a basket of tissues and just yeah, yeah. like compose myself. And then they bring out people power. I'm like, oh, okay, we're back now. <laughs> 
people power with that with that haircut right um mm-hmm. but yeah but, uh, which was which was like i'm like oh really this guy you know and i love that they bring it around is and, and, and look john laurinitis is another one everybody knows john laurinitis people power they don't know dynamic dues they don't know these other things <laughs> by the way great talk uh a but few you weeks. guys haven't mentioned the best speech wait, 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 hold on i'm working on my best okay, speech I'm, okay i'm, I'm sorry sorry i'm working sorry. on my best speech uh, got a couple but uh, but no no Connor definitely uh, de- Connor definitely uh, kind of hit it for me. But maybe it's because it's the hometown boy, and I've sat in Pittsburgh how many times now when they play that video and watch an entire arena weep. You know, I mean, I also thought it was I thought it was cool that they kind of oh Brian didn't directly bring it up, but he kind of brought up the fact that like keep in mind this is when Connor like the the whole like first meeting or whatever this wasn't when brian was like the top star like challenging for the wwe title like even in title contention at all he was connor or brian was connor's favorite wrestler when he was tag team champions with kane mm-hmm. and in like a comedy like right he's a bad guy and that's the thing and, and a bad guy and in like a mid-card gimmick mm-hmm. right like, right like that says something, I think. And I think I think that says something also because also the way WWE works is like you're like oh he's not a top of the card but he's doing this weird thing over here. The kids latch onto him, you know. Uh, Matt, every time Dean Ambrose comes on, your your kid stands at attention and is paying attention to it. Your wife too, I know, but you know. <laughs> well, but yeah, my my five year old now he he's caught on now. So every time Dean Ambrose comes out, he will run over to my wife and be like. That's your favorite. There, there's Dean, mom. There's your favorite, mom. It's just like, I know. But, I know. but he's also. I think, some, but, I, I think some people get so caught up with the idea that kids only like John Cena or Randy Orton or, you know, whoever. You know, I, I think it's cool that there are people out there that move like a Daniel Bryan or a Dolph Ziggler or, and, and you know, that's their favorite wrestler. Like, I mean, you gotta think. When we were kids, we all liked the weird ones. That's mm-hmm. right. That's right. Like, exactly. Sorg loved the Bushwhackers for Christ's sake. Dude, I my loved favorite. I loved my the favorite was pear shaped big boss man. Pear shaped big <laughs> boss man. That's another one. Yeah. You know, I like the goofy ones. Like I like the Bruce the Barber beefcake, right? Because he was colorful and he had the big shears and he went to barber school and that was the tape I got. You know, I mean, it was just like he came with the shears when he got his little action figure. You know, it was. I mean, that was like, junkyard dog. You know, really resonated with me. Mm-hmm. My little sister loved Luna Vachon. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm wow. not joking. That was no. my sister actually dressed up as a wrestler for Halloween before I did. She dressed <laughs> up as Luna Vachon one year. Like, that's nuts. Mm-hmm. Just, and how like, long did it take for the hair to grow back, Mike? Uh, it was a wig. It was <laughs> oh, a wig. Good move by her. Yeah. Can I? This is a side <laughs> one. Just I thought about this. Uh, first, real quick, real, 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 real quick. I, I, I just this, this popped in my head. This is a this is a mini question, mini big question. Uh, what was the first, or have you gone to Halloween as a wrestler? For me, I did the Undertaker. Uh, it was makeshift. I don't know if we had the hat or not. I think yeah, we did have some sort of duster hat, and we actually had gray <laughs> trash bags we wrapped around my shoes and up my legs to look like the boots. Mm. Um, I actually own a um, a length of chain, and I put a master lock around it. And yes, I was Mr. John C. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was it was it was uh, weird can... when we didn't have any plans. I'm like, I have jorts, I have a shirt. Let me get a chain <laughs> quick. Boom. Mine, mine, mine is a uh, not a Halloween story. It's a Comic Con story from December of. 2014. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I hit the Comic Con. I had a lantern and everything. And a terrible oh, looking wow. beard and wig. Oh, wow. Well. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> kind of fell we off. All, we all need to do a show in costume one time. Yes, we do. I still have the Macho Man stuff from the 80s party a few years ago. Uh, Matt Garland, you? What do I have? What? I'm sorry. I, I was talking to Riz in the chat room. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> have? have you dressed? Halloween. What was the first time, if you have dressed as a wrestler for Halloween? I've never dressed as a wrestler oh, for Halloween. Oh, wow. Cool oh, that's that. what we're doing at Halloween. <laughs> All right. Matt, Matt Carlins, you need to dress as Dean Ambrose. But, but no lie. While I was in college, a couple of my roommates dressed as the Hardy Boys one year and no. went out to the bar wow. dressed yeah. as the Hardy ah, Boys. Ah, ah. But you know what? I mean, the attitude there was, they were cool as tell. And but, that, and that's a pretty that's a pretty easy one, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, you just, at that, you that time, we, hot topic and yeah, like my closet was generally the Hardy Boys costume in that era. So, <laughs> uh, uh, Eamon? 
I just did a cheap Rey Mysterio one year with a mask and a Rey Mysterio t-shirt. And I, it was it was bargain based in Rey Mysterio. All right, all right, have, back to I have cheap Batman. But that's more of a oh, case I'm not good I did a cheap Batman costumes. too. I did cheap Batman one year too. Um anyways, sorry, back around, back around. Uh, who who didn't go yet for the Hall of Fame speech? I didn't. Uh, okay, all right, Mike. Best speech by far Alundra freaking Blaze. Oh yeah. The current reigning defending <laughs> WWE women's champion. I just love that. I just love any speak for uh, Bull Nakano and Shigusa Nagoya getting name dropped. That's all I care about. <laughs> I, I I thought it was great that she was like uh like she said she was the first Paul Heyman girl. She talked about the dangerous alliance, like mm-hmm. She got the Rick Rude pop, which was awesome. Nice. And if he's not in next year, along with yeah. DDP and Vader, like I think Bobby, yep. you said, you said yep. those guys, right? That's, yeah. Yep. You could tell she really like was very like happy about her career. Like, like, like she made she, uh, she made reference to like her feud with Oklahoma of all things. Oh yeah. <laughs> but no, Evan Courageous. And and well, that and Evan. Well, Courageous. No, both, both actually, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. he pulled barbecue sauce out of the. And, out and, of the uh, garbage can. I'm sure nobody else got the. Oh my but. god! That's why she pulled JRs out. Yeah, because she got. Mm. Kind of I didn't pick up on that. I didn't yeah, pick yeah, up on yeah, that. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it went by a lot of people's heads too. <laughs> but, um, cut. I also totally forgot she was part of Team Madness. Yep. Yeah. Totally forgot about that, yep. and that was that was amazing that she kind of brought it around to Randy a little bit. Totally yeah. forgot about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I totally forgot that she still drives monster trucks. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> I also awesome. think it was a good, um, a good testament to this whole give deep as a chance thing too, because I, I love the fact that like she brought up the fact that she, her goals and her aspirations was to be a stunt woman mm-hmm. and to be in movies and stuff like that. But somebody convinced her to be a pro wrestler. <laughs> like I, I think so many people get caught up of like, oh, you know, people that couldn't make it as models are now going to be wrestlers. It's like no, maybe they just you know, are you know, this is just where they fit in, and and there's and you can be as good as anyone. You know, I I, I think that was really cool to c- cool to see. Yeah, I yeah. also I also kind of wish her her speech was like a hard reset of the Divas Division. Because she brought the no, I mean, I, I, mean, I mean, the I she you. did make a point of saying this is what a real women's belt looks like. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. she she brought the belt back. She's like, this is the real women's championship, and like you could have had something set in place where, like they they would be like Nikki Bella would even realize like, hey, you know what, Alundra Blaze is right. We're women's wrestlers. We mm-hmm. want like we've been saying give divas a chance. We should really be saying give wrestling a chance. And she brings out. The women's title, mm-hmm. like because uh, it NXT. still looks like it looks like a damn good belt, and it fits in with the classic look of the IC title. That's mm-hmm. yeah, true. And and the the NXT Women's Championship is a women's championship. Yes, yes. it's not a Divas Championship, and it's nicer than the Divas belt. What do I call the Divas belt? The State Tramp Champ Championship of the world. That's right. That's what it is. That's right. Uh, Matt, what about you? Um, my favorite part of the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I already gave mine, but uh, I didn't give mine. Oh, Bobby, yeah, you. Oh, I'm sorry, I, Bobby. Everybody, everybody said like pretty much uh, all the other ones. Um, I know, Mike, you didn't like the Larry Zabisco one. I I loved his stories of Bruno San Martino in Pittsburgh. Me too. Even though he did say them four times, that's all right. Um, I, it was I still, feel like it was it, still cool to hear that. He would have been better served if he brought out some notes. Because yeah, it's not like I don't like Larry Zabisco. <laughs> it's just I think. He wanted to be the guy that didn't bring out notes and wanted to be the badass and the good talker and everything. And I think he just got overcome yeah, with the yeah, emotion but you know, of actually I, being there. I'm with Bob. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, and this is we're probably rose colored glasses because we're he's a Pittsburgh guy. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. we're like that. He's talking about us, yeah, you know. But I, I think also you need to let you know a lot go on Hall of Fame for presentation and and, and such. Like this is I I know it wasn't clean, but you got to see a real emotional speech from him. Yeah, I, 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 you know, like Jerry Lawler and other people are like making jokes about like the show running long and stuff like that. It's like, but it's the Hall of Fame. Like, who cares? And that's yeah. fine. Like, and, it, it, and it's fine. It's it, it is <clears throat> there. It's it's a it's a night for everybody to kick back, relax, and celebrate wrestling. 
and and celebrate all these things. Nine people inducted, right? Four hours doesn't seem that long. No, no, and this, and this is a, you know, this is the other thing too, you know, and and this is for them to figure out and how do we do this and we let them go and and whatever it is, but um, and that's why you put a guy on uh last like kevin nash that will make his point in whatever space you gave him because he's that's what he that is what he's good at because he is good on the mic and he knows how to do that kind of stuff and same with sean Michaels. Kevin's, so, kevin nash's speech was like four minutes yeah. so going back to like the concept of the hall of fame and like the the presentation of it just one quick note um wwe needs to figure out and they and they have done some measures to it um for people that do attend the hall of fame when you attend the Hall of Fame, you're attending a Hall of Fame ceremony. You're not attending a wrestling show. What? Yeah, but since you have tickets no. out to wrestling fans, remember we're talking. And, and I don't mean to bash wrestling fans, but we've had this discussion in other contexts as well. Wrestling fans are wrestling fans are wrestling fans, and, and, and they're plus, not Amen, going to. Amen. You know, Amen. You have to remember, people are coming in from all over the world. Mm-hmm. People are going to access right before this. Mm-hmm. They're not going to walk around access in a suit i get that but and plus it's hot as balls out there no i know I, I don't know well i'm sorry i don't care about dress code yeah if you want to wear a wrestling shirt whatever i don't care you have to be respectful though right there was, uh, people, there was some time. douchebag i can't remember what speech it was but there was a guy doing the what chant during yeah someone, that which can is I just, completely disrespectful can i just say as wrestling fans can we please outlaw the what chant it is the worst chant and <laughs> It you're ruined not, Stone Cold for me for a while because I, I hate it. I hate it. But you're not there to you're not there to do that. You're not there to heckle, which I think so, someone did that with Alundra, like mm-hmm. when she was doing the trash can thing. Someone yelled, "Bring the belt out already!" Like, stop it. Like you you're there, there to be respectful. I, again, I don't give a shit about dress code. Mm-hmm. I, I get that. I get that. Not everyone has a suit. Not everyone's bringing their suit. Just be respectful. You, mm-hmm. People can I, control that. I think I um was listening to a podcast um over the last day or so, somebody who was at the Hall of Fame ceremony, and they said that there was at least some kind of signage in the yeah. arena that was indicating to fans to be respectful during the speeches. So someone, it's, someone, it's there, definitely there something is. that's on WWE's radar. Yeah, it is. Um, and I think maybe, I hopefully the, the, the group think of the wrestling fans can can be a good influence. And, and you guys think I that, mean, that, the one that, or two people who were kind of jerks yeah. really stood out, and I'm, I'm sure they were told, to shut up in a very polite way by the other yeah. people in the arena. I mean, the Hall of Fame I went to in the garden, they told us to kind of, um, you know, not chant too much. And there were there were things that they had around, like, you know, this is a very serious ceremony, all that stuff. But yeah. there's only so much you can do. Right, right. Especially I that maybe. No, I agree. I, th- you're not going to, you know, it's it's on the person doing yeah. it. And, and, yeah. and it's, you know, they, you know, they need, if, it happens. They need to get taken care of, pretty much. Um, I, I don't know if they. I mean, I, I, obviously, I wasn't there, so I couldn't hear what they actually like. If they said anything before the show, saying like, "Hey, we, you know, don't do this or this," but they do have like signs. I think like the, around the building that basically said, "No cat calling," no, you know, none of that kind of stuff. Um, I, I again, I, I don't. Bl- it's not like I'm blaming WWE. I, I'm just call out to wrestling fans who attend the Hall of Fame. You have to treat it like a ceremony. You don't treat it like a wrestling event. I think they should tell everyone that Brock Lesnar is wandering the arena <laughs> and he will attack the first thing that makes a sound. Honestly, <laughs> um, at, at Comic Cons, like when they're doing exclusive footage, they like I went to the Daredevil one. They told us all that the security agents were shield agents that would confiscate you and block you in Prison Forty Two if you made a sound <laughs> during some of the footage. So nice, nice, nice. I mean, you know, they you could do something like that. You, you got to figure out a way to get the message across, but at, at least it uh, clearly WWE is aware of it and and they're oh they're, yeah 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 yeah. It could have been worse. I think it was much worse actually the year before. So on that note, let's go to talk about our friends. Uh, we like pizza. I've been munching on this stuff all night. Uh, SliceOnBroadway.com. Our friends down the road here, along the tracks on the T line. Uh, some great pizza, uh, providing pizza to Pittsburgh podcasts uh, for the last year, and we really enjoy it for our guests that join us here in the studio throughout the evening. Is is podcast night, podcast day at Sorgatron Media, and we do about five of these and a sixth thing, so there you go. Um, so, uh, you know, please, you know, check it out. Uh, let them know uh, that you dig them. They're also on Main Street down in Carnegie, PA. They said they're making their stuff from scratch. It's great stuff. They're addicted to pizza. 
uh, making good pizza, uh, uh, and, and, and we can really kind of relate to that. So SliceOnBroadway.com. Thanks to them for supporting this show, all of our shows here at Sorgatron Media, with pizza. So with that, we'll uh, take a short break, record that fun thing for gold, and we'll be right back with the big question. It's my turn this week. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, snap. This is Raymond Rowe, and you are listening to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey, guys. It's the Wrestling Mayhem Show back again with a big question. And Lunchbox, I'm told, I've been receiving the smoke signals. Um, I've been receiving uh, messages tied to the foots of pigeons. Uh, but the messages are, of course, written on packagings from juicy fruits it's weird but he says he's coming back he's coming back next week he's going to be returning with his own big questions but this week it's um, my turn Sorg, i have a question hmm. is lb going to come back with a mohawk and weird jack sparrow facial hair oh i hope not <laughs> i hope not i'll ask him that at lunch this week anyways um uh, i you know i got thinking about this you know wrestlemania a lot of fun we've been talking about it um but there's a few moments Matt, you can concur with this, uh, where we literally jumped out of our seat. In my mind, those few things were when Randy Orton pulled that crazy RKO out of nowhere, off of the stomp. Um, there was something else that happened in between there, and of course, when Seth Rollins came out at the end, uh, to the point I remember your wife, uh, Matt Carlin's, uh, uh, like I think almost breaking her hand because uh, on the ceiling above her. Yeah. <laughs> that she just raised up so quickly. Um, so I want my question is: Can you think of a time? This is kind of a remember when I know, but when was the last time you remember raising up out of your seat in reaction to something that happened in wrestling, or a time when you know back when, or something like that? When did you raise up last? As the short version. No. Oh. The hey, last man. time, the last time, or just a time? A time could be the last time, but I mean, I think that's the ultimate. You know, uh, everybody saw the LL Cool J entrance video, uh, intro video, which I thought was tremendous. Like this is a, thing. this is another. This is why we watch wrestling. <laughs> this is why we're excited about WrestleMania kind of thing. Um, I, I got I actually watched that before the indie show, uh, um, not the podcast, but the show I worked uh, Saturday night, and I'm just like, dude. And she passed the Chachi. He's like, dude, you know. Uh, and, you know, Chachi's kind of a tough nut, nut to crack for that sometimes, too. Um, but, again, that vision of, like, we're all in the same moment. And we all just reacted at the same time to, to something. And and that kind of shared experience is kind of what I'm going for here. Um, I don't know. who's got Who's got the first one? I, I got mine. Um, two years, roughly two years ago to the day, uh, Dolph Ziggler cashing in. On my birthday at Raw after Mania, I lost my damn mind. I took a video of the whole thing. You can just hear me screaming, holy shit, holy shit, he's doing it, holy shit. And then he almost lost, and then he eventually won. It was all the better. It was so good. Nice. Uh, but, yeah, and I brought my friend to Raw uh, who said he'd go with me because it was my birthday. He doesn't watch wrestling. He had no idea what the fuck was going on. <laughs> it was pretty great. And he loved Raw up until the point where we were stuck on a train ride for two hours home with everyone fandangling. <laughs> <laughs> Remember wow. that, guys? Wow, yeah. Yeah, well, it actually happened a little bit on the pre-show. So I think it's kind of funny that fandangling and doing Lucha Lucha is the same movement. Mm -hmm. Co-op that. Anybody else who's got the next one? All right, I'll take it, Sword. I won't put anybody on the spot for this one because I know it's kind of outside the box. No, it's okay. It's okay. I, I, I got a good memory of something like this happening to me. Um, it was WrestleMania 20, and uh, you may remember there was a triple threat match in the main event. Yep. <laughs> and, um, Stevie Richards. <laughs> anyway, the point – I got to set the scene for you a little bit. I was working in Savannah, Georgia, but it was around the St. Patrick's Day weekend. So my cousin from Buffalo, who doesn't watch wrestling, and my other friend who was uh, hanging around down there, who was from uh, Erie, was also down there. And he kind of watches wrestling, but doesn't really watch that much. But they were in a decent mood, and we had just had fun spending St. Patrick's Day weekend in Savannah, Georgia, which is a place you should go to celebrate St. Patrick's Day, in case you're looking for a place. Anyway, 
they were like, okay, let's go watch WrestleMania 20 at this sports bar in Savannah, Georgia. And, you know, nice. Just it, basically what you want from your sports bar. You've got a nice packed room. Um, and I'm sure if you could, guys can remember this uh, triple threat match in the main event of WrestleMania 20 between uh, Triple H, uh, Shawn Michaels, and this other guy. Sensor. And um, this other guy had been on a bit of a journey. Um, so if you're a wrestling fan of by a certain age, you had watched this certain wrestler since he was in WCW and coming up and kind of creeping along and being kind of like that mid-card title holder guy for a while. And then all of a sudden, he wins the Royal Rumble, and he's in the main event of WrestleMania 20, and you're like, oh, maybe he's going to win. But you have to also remember at the same time, Triple H is in full holding everybody down mode. He just beat Booker T in the most – horrifying fashion possible the year earlier. So I'm just trying to set the mindset. So when this certain wrestler makes Triple H tap out, the scene in this bar sort of run, and I'm sure a scene repeated in bars across the country and in living rooms everywhere was crazy. And sure enough, me, I was off my bar stool and people are screaming at the television set for Triple H to tap out. Like literally screaming at the TV set. Like 50 some odd people in the back of this bar. And when he finally taps out, the bar goes crazy. <laughs> and, um, I, you know, it's, it's one of those things where even my cousin, who knows nothing heads or tails about wrestling, was like, okay, that was awesome. <laughs> I'll admit it. <laughs> um, that was like that ultimate, like, just visceral, emotional wrestling moment that you have to watch for like years and years and years to just build up all that energy so mm -hmm. that when you finally get that one little thing that you wanted, it just like, you know, mm -hmm. I, I got a throwback for you. Yep. Goldberg being Hogan. Mm. Oh, that's a good one too. At the time that was such a hot moment. It was another one of those. We're sick of Hogan. We're sick of him having the belt. You know, ah, NWO is always getting over like those few, few, few moments where WCW got over on, on NWO were so passionately hot. You I know? still can't. Yeah. That even uh, even a little bit. The Sting one. Right. was such a relief. Actually, no. You know what's even bigger than that? Because we didn't know that it wasn't for the title when Roddy Piper put Hogan to sleep. In their first meeting in, in WCW, um, was was one of those as well. Like I, the Goldberg one. And I mean, I wasn't obviously watching them, but no. like, I felt like I felt like the only time where like they actually got one up on the NWL because even the Sting ones like marred in controversy. Right, 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 right. Um, great, great lead, and that's why I, I kind of roll back the Piper. Piper was the first time you saw a weakness. Right. Mm -hmm. And again, kind of didn't realize until afterwards, like, what? Well, this wasn't for the title. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, like, we we're, like we're, oh, this happened. <laughs> Holy crap. He beat him. Why doesn't he not have a title? <laughs> <laughs> but that, but that, that, that post look was, was like a lot of post WCW pay per views. So uh, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of sad <laughs> faces. Yeah. A lot of sad faces. Um, but, anyways. Anyways, but they were doing a good a, thing at the time in general. I got a f oh yeah yeah yeah. I got a few yeah a, uh, a few, few quick ones. Okay, um, I'm gonna go in chronological order. Um, the barbershop window incident. Mm -hmm. Oh Shawn yeah. Michaels and Marty Jannetty. Oh yeah. Of course. Um, Chris Jericho's debut. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Um, and CM Punk beating John Cena at Money in the Bank <laughs> for the title because you didn't know. You, you, everybody assumed Cena was going to win that because of the contract negotiations with Punk, and it, it was amazing. And honorable mention goes to uh, Chris Jericho winning the Undisputed Championship too. So. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, my 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 secondary one was Shawn Michaels winning the first Elimination Chamber because that in person was amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Uh, they also had that guy that Matt was talking about that we can't seem to remember his name. <laughs> uh, I think it's everybody. Uh, I got, I got my. Oh, oh, uh, hey man, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I, I was thinking a lot, and for some reason, I thought the most recent one was the like the two main events for uh, NXT R Evolution, the Sar Charlotte Sasha Banks and the Sami Zayn Andrew mm -hmm. Neville, just because I was so jacked for that. Uh, but two others came to mind that are a bit later. Um, 
the first I remember was um, the Joey Styles pipe bomb on Raw. Because mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, it was my first time ever seeing anything like that, mm-hmm. and I was just like so shocked by it. Um, the other was the Nexus debut. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That's really good. Because yeah, he was in yeah. Las Vegas for that. So unexpected. And just the way they did it was just, it felt so chaotic and so, like, crazy. I remember um, where I was for that. Las Vegas. That's a, oh, yeah. that's a good one. Amy. So that's, uh, so we have we have one from the chat room. Uh, we all saying, last time I rose up was when Feel Bad clothesline Nick S. Von Taylor out of his boots. Uh, which you can see at PittsburghWrestling.com later this week. Um, and and, and uh, if it if it made wheels rise up, you know it's a good <laughs> oh, boom. Oh, boom! Oh, too soon. Man. Boom! Too soon. Hammer wheels. Wow! Wow! Hope wheels comes and runs over your feet. Yeah. <laughs> Wheels has said worse things about himself than any, anything we've reached here. Wheels knows it's all in love. It's Bri- all in Brian, love. Riz, oh, says, wait, Riz says Brian Pillman's gun scene. Oh, Ooh, Pillman's gun yeah. scene. Yeah. I'll say the – um um I, I can't say for sure that I jumped out of my seat, but when Austin stunned McMahon for the first time, yeah. I'm pretty sure I jumped I know, out of my seat. I know the exact date of that. That was September 22nd, 1997. The only reason I know that was because – I couldn't watch Raw live that day because it was my mom's birthday and we had to go out to dinner. I went to school <laughs> the next day. Everyone was telling me about it. I'm like, I didn't get to, see, to watch Raw last night yet. I had to rewind the tape. As soon as I got home, I watched it. I'm like, oh, that was amazing. Was that was at the night. garden too. Yeah, that was that was also the night uh, with Cactus Jack coming back. Nice. Oh, that was a great one. Oh, trying to contain myself when I realized the ECW had 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 invaded uh, WWE on early in the invasion angle. Oh, I was yeah. watching the at my grand. I was watching at my grandparents' place, trying to be quiet so I don't bother them because I know they don't give a crap about wrestling. <laughs> while I was visiting, <laughs> and I'm just like, you know, it was kind of like, you know, they come in and just like, oh, okay, what are you? You know, <laughs> kind of looks. <laughs> and I'm just like, this is Eddie, really good. Eddie beating Brock was one of those too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Eddie. I was. Yeah, I was one of my early thoughts on that one too. So, um. All right. Uh, anyways, uh, let us know your thoughts. Hey, you. Know, if you uh, tweet us, what made you rise up out of your seats in pro wrestling? Um. <laughs> hashtag. W- you see it. It's so sultry, sort. Our uh, Armageddon, wait. Armageddon six woman uh, bikini pool match. Sorry. Oh jeez! Oh, wait, no, I just got one I answer. Watch. One I answer. Know. Early Sunny. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna say one word. Early Sunny. <laughs> Maybe oh, two words. So much two I words. forgot two how words. to sunny. spell. Huh. <laughs> um, uh, but no hashtag WMS big question, and you'll actually get a copy of this week's. So we mentioned a th- something that happened there. March the victory 2015 uh, with the intergender match with uh, Mickey Knuckles and Nick Osborne Taylor. Taylor, it's a pretty tremendous match. Actually, it's a lot of fun, and uh, and Trachi put a lot of work in to get that match to look good. So there's that. Um, so please do that. And uh, we had some responses from last week's question, actually in email form. Uh, last week's question was uh, whether you know not having the belt every week on Raw really kind of hurt the product or not so often on every pay-per-view. And we did have an email question. Oh, no, I lost your name. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but he says, uh, in my opinion, I think it does hurt the WWE product uh, due to the weakness of other titles. And that, let's be honest, the creative team is a C plus at best in the powers that have that be have forgot how to build talent. WWE is nowhere close to the mid card of the Lucha Undergrounds of the world. Anyways, Derek, uh, Derek Stroud. As always, oh thank you, Derek Stroud. As always, your biggest fan in Utah. Thanks, guys. Keep up the good work. He'll be receiving a copy of Night of Superstars three. Include who's Ooh. there last year? Bret Hart was there. I know. Uh, great match with AJ Styles against. Um, Getting his name. Oh, Derek Stroud. No, not Derek Stroud. <laughs> not Derek Stroud. Oh, I, he's, I can see his face. He's an awesome dude. He was in TNA for a minute. What so, does he look like? And then that stoke monkey fell over. Oh, jeez. Um, beardy <laughs> guy like? from New York like? Wrestling. Like? Uh, but no, tremendous matches there, and a lot of great names and a lot of great faces there. Uh, so he'll be getting a copy of that this week. Like um, in the meantime, <laughs> hey. You guys like t-shirts, right? 
Sure. Sword, we'd love t-shirts. Matt Does Carlin's Mike likes Fox t-shirts. t-shirts. Matt Carlin's likes the, the Mayhem Club t-shirt. You can get that over at Spreadshirt. I have a link, link, link over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can also check out uh, ProWrestlingTees.com. No, that's Bobby. Bobby, what are you doing <laughs> on my shot? I have a shirt from Finn Balor. Like, that's not. Oh, that's Bobby not, and I are both wearing WWE merch. Bobby, that's not yeah. what I'm looking for. But, but it's NXT merch. Pro Wrestling Tees. NXT merch. Pro Wrestling Tees. Dot com slash WMS. We got some great designs there. I love going to a party and seeing wrestle wrestling mayhem shirts. Like every wrestling mayhem shirt represented almost. Um, <laughs> sure, it was Anthony Nice. Anthony Nice. Thank you very much. Uh, versus the grind on AJ MTV. Styles was so great. No, that's not right. But there's so much more going on there. Um, there are plenty of Hall of Famers. This is looking like the best of WWE shop at these days over ProWrestlingTees.com. But you know, great. You can you can get some awesome stuff. You can get some million dollar man merchandise if you really want to. That's cool. You know, and 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 you know, it's kind of uh kind of going more more of that percentage is going to the wrestlers. It's not filtering through the WWE machine, right? Uh, but if you go in here, you can check out a bunch of... You can still get Ahmed Johnson merchandise for the diehard what? Ahmed Johnson fans out there. <laughs> I was a diehard Ahmed Johnson fan. Or, hey, kid. we just mentioned him. He was at IWC. Anthony Nice actually has... A, uh, the has a uh, t- <laughs> Bobby, no. Uh, has a t-shirt <laughs> shop on here. Uh, I believe Joe Dabrowski has one, too. Did I... Did I see that? Um, Browski. I think he's getting one um, for Montreal Theory and such. Uh, Chavo Guerrero's on here. Friends of the show. Uh, Daphne. Christopher Daniels, a friend of the show, on here. Chuck Taylor. He was awesome. Davey Richards. Um, and Doc Gallows. Dustin Rhodes. Who's that guy? Uh, but you can. Friends of the show, uh, Eric Young's on here as well. So a lot of cool guys on here being represented. Jimmy Jacobs, who's uh, going to WWE, of course, and so much more. Support indie wrestling with t-shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com. But sorry, ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. So, guys. And, and sword, sword, by the way, it was Riz who, uh, who who came up with Anthony Nice. He's giving me shit in the chat room because he can't be patient for a fucking second and let me wait till you finish the ad to tell you it was him. Right. He is the grind. Right. No, Bobby. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. So let's get into the fan mail. Um, so I meant Riz. What? I meant Riz. Why did none of these names? The grind. None of these names copied over. It's really, it's really perturbing me. Uh, oh wait, wait! I got a name at the bottom. I actually got a name at the bottom. What, what is this? Okay, I, I want to touch on uh, Antonio Garza's email first. Actually, uh, I was gonna say I know. Should we read that first part of that one? I don't know what's going should. on. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll do this. Okay. Gabriel, who's been ripping it up. He's all over the place uh, in our in our Facebook groups. He's been emailing us. Uh, apparently a newer fan of the show. And uh, Thank you for all the kind words that you've had over the last few weeks. Apparently, did he say he listened to like 30 episodes of the show in mm. like a week? Something Jesus like that. That's Christ. four bastards. Yeah, it's, it, too. It, it, more highly recommended than watching thirty WrestleManias. In the I, I, I don't know. I, 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 don't know what, I don't know at which point your sanity is better after. You know, <laughs> had to put up with Eamon and I's whiny ass voices. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, because he says challenge accepted from Mad Mike's question on whose voice I'm annoyed with the most. You you <laughs> asked this. I did. I was joking. He did ask this. I was joking, take honestly. A, take them to the task. I have a question I mean, for him. I mean, let's be honest. This. How many of us? How many of us on this show actually have a good podcasting voice? Let's be honest about it. Warming this. up my hands for the epic bourbon that's about to come my way. <laughs> and, and, and I don't know if anybody, <laughs> the most professional, prof- professional. On, the pro's professional on mic person here is probably Eamon of all people because he does I it for a wrestling be. promotion, right? I would hope Eamon's the most professional on. <laughs> you know, and back up with Matt Carlin's because he's actually been on the TV, if I recall. Uh, I work in television. I've been on television. So there you go. I mean, he, he should know. He's like has a so communication was degree in a or commercial, something. Or was in a thing once. What? <laughs> I was in a thing once. I was, was, in, a once. I was you know, in a wrestling mayhem thing. The only thing I could think of was when you were interviewed at Comic Con that one time. But I was like, that wasn't a that wasn't a like uh, uh, interview. Well, it was an interview. I'm I joking. was. What was I interviewed at Comic Con for? 
It's for something. I don't even remember, but you were interviewed once at a Comic Con. I was heard laughing in the background on Mike and Bob's radio show one time. There you go. There you go. I, I Okay, I've been on the radio. I've been on TV, I guess. Um, I've done commercials. You should listen to some other pod, like some early podcast I've been on then. Yeah, well, you should do just any of our podcasts in general. Anyways, this is a whole other conversation. But on his thing, Eamon, he has the look, but when he talks, I want to break out a Jericho <laughs> quote. I'll let you guys guess on which one. LOL, no offense. Much love, Eamon. He, he does love my looks, apparently. <laughs> okay. I have the hey, looks. Hey, Eamon, that I, means. I'd take that. You have a great look for audio podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I Second don't. most annoying to me is Bobby F. J. Town yeah. and Bo oh, Diggity yeah. Woo. By the way, so so let's let's preface this. Any question Mike asks is officially sarcasm now. Yeah. For right, anyone right, listening, right, 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 you don't right, right, have right. to actually answer it. No, no. As for the voice, want to ask this is why I want to. This is why the fan mails are at the end of the show now, by the way. Um as for the voice that I like the best, it's between da 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 da. Riz, who's just badass. <laughs> I, I love that description. Is, is, Riz, Riz, the, is Riz Gabriel? Riz what? is Riz is Danny Trejo's stunt double. Wait, hold on, hold on. Is Riz catfishing us with Gabriel? Like I don't I know. That's with, what I'm trying to figure like out. I did with um uh, what was that April Fool's joke I did? That, that nickel kid. Like um, Chris Nickel, yeah. That was but, a thought. That was a worry for a bit. Let's, talk, let's, let's hear Gabriel say how Riz is super sexy and badass and the greatest person <laughs> That's, ever. Okay, wait, wait, wait. There's more. There's more. Mad Mike's voice reminds me of Cena trying to be funny. Good voice. And oh, funny. I'm going to take that to be compliment. Funny. It is compliment. No, it, compliment. This is in the compl- compliment section of the email. Um, <laughs> and section of the email. And Sorg, because, well, you're the host slash boss and you're the reason i started listening oh excellent okay all right uh matt Collins said that there is no cure for the wrestlemania blues i disagree the answer is you guys as a group are the cure i get less depressed when listening to all of you on all different you're gonna call us a shitty band great (laughs) (laughs) why are just thinking everything negative listen listen we've left the negative part of the email amen stop taking the rest of the email personally has nothing to do with you i got good looks man Just take it. Just take it. You guys, as a group, really cure. Uh, I get less depressed when listening to all of you on different topics. Food for thought during WrestleMania week. You should do an hour show every day to cure the blues. Okay, he sent this a little earlier. Wow. And I'm glad. Uh, yeah. Uh, I agree. Make your regular Tuesday show. And then leading up to Mania, have everyone watch a random Mania and dissect it. I kind of did that. Yeah. <laughs> or just you a much person I got, I got not, it. Just, not just a random mania all the random manias <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the, the test is like if you watch back to because we I did a podcast of like up to five minute thing on each Wrestlemania that's all on YouTube that you can go all, back and all watch all around 30 of them so go see if you can tell my <laughs> mental state as I go through all of them um, anyways uh, I have I, I have now watched 50 plus episodes. I watched WMS Indie Midweek War. I'm about oh. to dip into Insert Coin and Panel Riot. Nice. Guess wow. What? Wow. Guess what? Panel Riot. Just one, of the, one of the annoying voices is the host of the uh, <laughs> boss battle. So. There you go. There you go. Glad, glad you like at least half of Indie Midweek yeah. <laughs> Just wanted to let you guys know I'm enjoying you so much and I'm going to become a Patreon in mid to late April. Wow. Uh, Gabriel, aka Rip City Uprising, out. So, thank you. Thank you. In, in all honesty, in all honesty, I, 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 I'm sounding like a bit of a dickhead to this yeah, guy. Yeah, thank, you, thank you. Thank you for listening. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you for listening to my annoying voice. Thank my you. question thank is. You. Who's the best personality of no, 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 no. <laughs> All right. Well, I got one here. I got one here from Garza that came in here uh, a little later. Uh, I got to hand it to them with rest. Uh, the credit where credit is due is the title of the email. I got to hand it to them when WrestleMania... With WrestleMania being WWE's Wrestle Kingdom, they definitely went all out and managed to give a good show. <laughs> they give good show. Uh, I'd still argue against some of the booking decisions, but at this point, it matters no more. Glad that WWE managed to get the 2001 run-in of DX and the NWO. 
in 2015, <laughs> but at least Hogan took a bump. It felt like the commentary table hadn't completely buried WCW. It even makes WWE bad. It even yeah, it even makes WWE bad by bragging uh bragging about defeating a weak company like WCW. Raw went from good to bad. The last hour kind of dragged. We we discussed this last night yeah. on the Raw wrap up as well. Uh, one thing I did notice: if a world known and respected wrestler just died because of a cervical spine fracture, oh, do yeah. try to find a different injury to give Michael Cole. It's I, I just didn't realize. I didn't, that. I didn't that. realize that until like somebody oh, posted a story about how yeah, wow. the, the same injury that uh, killed uh, Guayo Junior was what they said Michael Cole had. So wow. Yes. Oh, yeah. I didn't even notice that. That. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, that's not that's not the there's a scare. you're frozen yeah. on a creepy smile during that comment like i'm so sorry yeah. <laughs> um all i know uh and i know this may go on deaf ears with some but go watch uh ring of honor supercard of honor nine jimmy jacobs had the greatest happiest in-ring career ending stuff i've ever seen better than macho and liz getting back together zero out thank you very much zero mm. that was an awesome email yeah. uh, filling us yeah. in and uh, and I think that's all our correspondence for the week, if I'm not mistaken. Zero desperately wants us to start watching more Ring of Honor. I know, I know. I, and I, I'm I watch try Ring to. of Honor now. I want to try to. Let I, me I'm, just say. Let yes. me just say. Yes. Donovan Dijak is a beast. Whoa. He's a beast. You're a beast, Bobby. Yeah. Mm. Hey, Bobby. <laughs> yeah. I can't. Pick, I, can't yeah. Pick, I can't pick people up and kick them in the face. <laughs> Well, practice, maybe, you know. I can't. <laughs> I can't lift anything. It's all good. Do you even lift, bro? I need to host the grind. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Anyways, um, uh, so real quick, and we'll get to our uh, outs here. We still got a little bit of uh, indie mayhem. Holy crap! To record. Uh, thank you so much for staying here late, guys. Sorry for the lateness. We did do his Happy up here. April Fool's Day, everyone! Oh no. I'm Gabriel. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Totally I would kidding. punch you through the internet right now. Um, <laughs> For the next 24 hours, don't believe anything you read online. Oh, no. Do not it believe me. anything oh, no. you read. And unless... I, you know how little sleep I get after these shows? I'm going to be so... Oh, this is going to be so bad. It's gonna, it's, I shouldn't even get on the train tomorrow for these meetings. Um, anyways, uh, give me a, a couple minutes here. Uh, do, is there anything you want to say about uh, Impact Wrestling this week, Mad Mike? Uh I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. I watched Impact. Mm -hmm. I live tweeted Impact. I do not remember a single fucking thing that happened on Impact. <laughs> I do not remember a single goddamn thing. Hold on, hold on. I got to fix the graphic for this one. Is that more appropriate? <laughs> um, Impact, yes. Impact? Yeah. Question mark. Um, watch. I, I, I know what they have coming up this week. Uh, they have... Yet another Bobby Roode versus Eric Young match. Yet. A... I thought we were told that that was over, Mike. I thought we were. See, all right. The one thing I do remember, now that I'm thinking of it, they it's ran back two ads for next week. They ran two ads for, for, this, for this upcoming week's impact. One of the ads said, Bobby Roode finally gets his hand on his former friend Eric Young, to which I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, it's finally up. And the other ad said, <laughs> "Bobby Roode and Eric Young will clash for the last time." No. To which I said, "What?" <laughs> well, so, can't. so Destination America really has this shit on lockdown, guys. <laughs> I think um, TMA needs to be advertising the catheters, not ROH. Uh, but actually, this week we have we have um a rematch of Angle and Lashley. Which I mean, they have good wrestling matches, so it should be good. Mm -hmm. uh, the aforementioned Rude versus Young again, and uh, oh, I know what happened this week. There was a fucking cage match, and Jeff Hardy won because he's Jeff Hardy. Mm. But they're back in the Impact Zone, so if you uh, don't like seeing English people and like seeing Floridians, well, there you go. <laughs> but let's be and honest. And they have a Titantron. They have a Titantron this week, Sorg. Even Ring of Honor has a Titantron now. So yeah, but mm -hmm. this is the first time that TNA has had a Titantron. Since moving to Destination America. Oh, okay. And oh, they're a old, long story since, history. They're since old. last week. <laughs> well, no, well, no, no. This, but, is the, no. Wait, no, no, this is the first time they had they've had a Titan Tron in like a good year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they they were in Destination America 
uh, in January. That's when they started up there. And well, I'm and, saying because like the eight months they spent in the Manhattan Center. <laughs> is yeah, the and the, the end of the end of last year they didn't have Titantrons at all. Is but the Titantron a, a parallelogram? Uh, no, no. It is it is there are two squares? <laughs> uh, it looks like all the Titantron videos were made with uh, Windows Paint. Um, <laughs> can can I say a quick side note since since um. Uh, about since you you know the the whole thing with TNA, uh, on YouTube there's apparently a lot of from the free like TNA pay per view from back when they were in the asylum, like in like early TNA. Um, very shit shows. Yeah, I almost want to watch those instead of the. New they're movies. worse than they're worse than anything they've done. Hey, Amen. I years. I highly highly doubt that. Th- their production is probably the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire goddamn life. Again, I highly doubt this. You haven't seen what Destination America's been putting out. It is. I. It's pretty bad. <laughs> it's really bad. All right. On that point, um, let's move on. It's time to learn what you, to find out what you learned from wrestling this week. Uh, now we did get, if I can, uh, the, we do have a lot of them from the Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, Facebook group. A lot of them, actually, a lot of them. Matt Taylor says, once the table is on its side, that thing gains density and weight of a thousand dying suns. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you leave it up during the rest of the so night? Good. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> it made no sense. Jim Sharman could be the wrestle genius. When a person is effectively vaporized from this world, sometimes. A single shoe will throw some <laughs> Michael Cole. Guys, she's a heel. Oh. <laughs> Kyle in there says uh, that Triple H is actually John Connor on the offensive against Skynet. And Ronda Rousey is a Super Saiyan. Accurate. Mm-hmm. Alex Carr has learned that Brock Lesnar is going to be on Raw every week. Oh. Uh, Gabriel, uh, who sent a great email, said, I learned that when WWE makes you despise them, all of a sudden they hit you with an RKO out of nowhere. WrestleMania 31 was, in my opinion, the best ever, but the argument, but for argument's sake, I'll say it's top five. I'm with you on that. I, I, I'll back that up. Uh, Kyle also says, one more. Stardust is morphing into Mr. Sinister from the X-Men. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Gabriel... No, no, no. These are other... Then it goes into, like, a lot of images. Like, a lot of strange images. Like, like... Yeah, okay. Um, Tony Garza learned that Seamus was the first step in WWE turning their roster into actual immortals. I like this. I, I like this. Yeah. There is one of the, the... Not the mohawk, but the, the beard thing going on. And Jimmy Jacobs and Lacey showed me that there is still happy endings in wrestling. There you go. Uh, so what did you learn this week, Eamon? Uh, I learned from wrestling this week that... Uh, what, well, it's not a, really a learned thing, but I learned it again. Sting is, Sting is super stupid. <laughs> Uh, not only did he, is he like, yeah, the NWO, my mortal enemy for fucking forever, including two of the guys who are like close friends with Triple H, they're gonna help me. I'm gonna just accept this. Who uh, we're celebrating? The and night also, before. yeah. Uh, and also, I'm gonna shake Triple H's hand uh, after he beat me, even though he beat me with interference. And by hitting me with a sledgehammer. <laughs> That's true. It wasn't exactly a clean victory, I guess, now I think about it. But, uh, well, you out. It even makes it more stupid. Because Triple, Triple H came out later in the show and was like, I beat Sting. Fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> if that was how he opened the promo, that would have been amazing. <laughs> Matt Carlins, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Uh, I learned that predicting the outcomes of WrestleMania matches is Hard for some people. Easier for <laughs> others. Wait, who won? Um, El, by the way, in case you're wondering, LB won our little prediction game. Nice. No, six no, matches no. right. Note how LB was the only one to pick Triple H. Did I get well, zero? That's funny you should mention that because my five-year-old son also picked Triple H. <laughs> in fact, my five-year-old son got three matches correctly predicted. Guess who he did better than, Sorg? Hmm. <laughs> well, he did just as good as you, Sorg. You also picked three matches correctly. He beat me. I only got two right. And Bobby, he beat you. Did you I get zero? Right. Oh, I got one oh, right. Who did I get I right? I just heard that five-year-old. Thank God. Who did I get right? I don't even remember. 
Adam oh, Rose. Let me show it for you real quick. Um, it was an Adam oh, Rose. This branch. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Oh, Kid and Cesaro safety. Oh, there. okay. Wow. Know, that's fair. Yeah, and and uh, we were like halfway through that four way tag match, and we're like, oh, LB, you didn't do picks, and he's like, this is still good. This is still good. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a little overboard. It's still good. But anyways, no, that was that was a lot of fun. That was, and I loved your Periscope. Yeah, I think the best part was when uh, after Triple H won. LB and my five-year-old high-fiving because they were the only two who guessed that Triple H was going to win. <laughs> we got it right! That's adorable. <laughs> That's so great. That's so I great. That. Um, uh, and I love the Periscope streaming video you did of, of him, of your of your kid making the picks. It was pretty yeah. good. So For posterity. Yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, Matt and Mike, what did you learn? Uh, I, I learned that when you get taken down to the suplex city, the Roman is green, but boy, is he pretty. <laughs> I saw that on one of the blogs I read about WrestleMania, and I'm, mm. I'm just using it. Bobby? I can't remember what I learned. I had it in my head, and I can't remember. Come back I to know. me. I know. Well, uh, we all learned that Sting and Triple H <laughs> both had bruises before fighting. That was weird. Oh, yeah. That, that was, was really weird. weird. That was really odd. Yeah, I was like, Stephanie what? Hit- yeah, Stephanie. Stephanie hit Hunter with a bag of oranges. Oh, oh, no. oh no, that's not supposed to bruise. Phone books, phone books, Matt. Phone books, phone books, about the phone books. My bad. I bag remember what mine was. Oh, it's yours. Before he comes back, I'm going to take a shot at, at Lunchbox's boy. Uh, John Cena, single-handedly, single-handedly in two nights, is destroying the future of wrestling. <laughs> First he beats Rusev. <laughs> Then he beats Dean Ambrose. Don't Two of my most famous superstars. Oh, like like beating Rusev, okay, is one thing. I I I, I get that. Yeah. He no sold, like straight up no yeah. sold a sunset flip power bomb. Go like, oh, fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Did not Who do you like think that. You are? Um, I learned that if any wrestler ever hits my table. I am packing up and leaving. <laughs> uh, that is your lead in and find out why on the Indie Mayhem show. Go check it out in our interview with Justin Plummer. Thank you, everybody that's joined us in the chat room throughout the day. Everybody stand up. Mike Allen is the MVP because I think he's still out there. I don't, I don't know. Give me a give me a wave in the chat room. Uh, the, the, we went so late, and I'm so sorry, Mike Allen, because I know you have work in the morning. Uh, but uh, hanging with us, but hopefully we don't do this too often. Wrestling, it's, it's a WrestleMania week, so we, we you, it's something special, right? Uh, so thank you to that. Uh, please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. 412-206-WMS0 if you want to hit up our hotline and let us know your thoughts. Good time. Let us know what voices you like. And let us know what your face, the voice is Personality like. Personality this week. Sorry. Don't forget to tell us which one is the prettiest. Yes. Who's the funniest? We need to get That's ladies. That's what I want to know. Who do you believe more. has the highest IQ? we got to get more <laughs> ladies on the show. Somebody email Jessica to see if she's willing to come back. Uh, good times at wrestlingmamshow.com is the email address. Good times. Good times. Good times. And please, like I said, subscribe to everything and check us out on social media on wrestlingmamshow.com. Com, basicsickness.com that if you like this intro outro music we use here and all over the place in the wrestling mayhem show network please also check out other things at sorgatronmedia.com um some wrestling some not uh if you'd like more of our voices uh go check that out please and uh geez with that mayhem out i guess This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.